Hello everybody. Welcome to another exciting episode of Jimmy's Jam Box. This is not a podcast. This is a show. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another exciting episode of Jimmy's Jam Box. We're continuing our adventures in Seattle, and we're now in a different place. That's right. We uh, grabbed a little Airbnb, and we're going to uh, be doing a few of them here. This is the, where the rest of this week's is going to be mostly. So let's go ahead and introduce our guest. Uh, yeah, I'm DJ Vega. With long with a whole bunch of other names, but stick with that for now. <laughs> well, hello, hello! Thank you so much for joining us. Yeah. I'm super excited to have you here. I got to be honest i I saw you on Instagram first. And mm-hmm. I saw your video, and I was mm-hmm. like, "Wow, this video is really cool!" And I like clicked on it because I was like, click on people but, like before I like follow and stuff. I like go and look at it, and it was like Seattle. I was like, "Oh, it's close." <laughs> it was like literally days after we had like decided to do this. Oh shit! Really? So I re- you were like the first person I reached out hey, to. Hey, that's yeah. dope. That's super dope. Yeah, I like and just that. and I just. Love it. Our interaction has been so amazing. So I just, you know, I want to say thank you for being here. Of course. Go ahead and uh, tell the people a little bit about, you know, who you are, what you do. Give us, uh, give us that like Tinder profile of DJ Vega <laughs> musically. <laughs> okay, where? Well, um, let me see. There's a lot of the resume is full, but uh, I'm a DJ first. That's the biggest thing, and honestly, probably the best and only thing. Like I'm, I'm a DJ, and I'm a DJ of all facets. Like I do the weddings, the bar mitzvahs, the clubs, the bars, the oh. Instagram videos. Yeah. Hell yeah! Oh, I mean, they're incredible. Yeah, they're thank incredible, you. y'all. Definitely, <laughs> you're you're gonna want to stick around for the end of this episode. All I'm saying, <laughs> um, but let's go ahead and get into it. Tell mm-hmm. us a little bit about what got you started. Oh man, uh, I was an army brat, so I mean, being around different like countries and stuff like that, like traveling with my dad, my family, and everything, like hearing different music. Honestly, it kind of just made me go, I like that sound, I like that sound, and I want to be weird and put them together. Oh. So then, once I started doing that, like in my head, at least it's always been a dream to be like, I want to DJ. I want to be in control of the music and what's going on. So that's awesome. That's that's basically how I started like as a kid. Yeah. And when did you, uh, when did you do your first like performance? Like when was the first time you like got behind decks and like really did something and tell us about that? Oh man. Uh, wow. I think my first real gig was at like a random barbecue spot. And I think my cousin was just like, Hey, they need a DJ DJ. And I was like, I'm trash, but <laughs> we can make it work. So it turned into me like bringing two crates of vinyl, and it was absolutely nothing that the crowd wanted to hear. Oh no! But I, you know, hey, did, I mean, did what I could. So, yeah. yeah. Well, let, hey, we all, we all have to start somewhere for sure. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, look at you now. Yeah. So I, clearly, yeah. clearly, clearly, you made the best of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now, um, I know we were talking about this a little off mic. Uh, yeah. Tell us a little bit about uh, the the first instrument that you ever played. Oh, saxophone. Yeah. Nice. That, was, that was the very first instrument I ever touched. Too. Hell yeah. Hey, shout out to uh, Jameson. <laughs> Yesterday's episode said the same thing. Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah dope. But yeah, I'm, I'm terrible at it now. If you put one in front of me right now, I wouldn't know what to do with it. Fair. Well, I'm going to tell you the same thing I told him. Saxophone players, just like drummers, mm. high demand. Yeah. If you I, have any I've kind of familiarity, that. you should pick it back up. Mm. Because... Uh, Get all the attention. You would, yeah. oh, dude, people would pick you up for everything. <laughs> yeah. Everything. It's such a big thing right now. There, there is actually a DJ who plays a saxophone while he Oh, DJs. isn't that a, uh, is it Goldfish? Goldfish? I don't know. Maybe they changed their name. There's somebody. I think he was out here for a while, too. Oh, I'm, there, there is a, there's a, another, like, I think they're like a duo called Goldfish. Okay, okay, they're no, like no, a, no. they're like a, like an EDM and DJ performer. Um, oh, but they, cool. that's their thing. Okay. They're, they're, yeah. In fact, don't. Don't fact check me too hard on that one, but I'm pretty sure y'all. <laughs> yeah, no, this DJ, I can't, I'm mad. I can't remember his name. I just honestly, I remember he is redheaded and he had a red hat on that time. Ah. But he did a routine and then he ducked down under the turntables and he picked up a saxophone and started playing. And everybody was like, what the hell? Wow. Yeah. I mean, any, anytime a real inch, I remember I went and saw uh, Madeon. Okay. A long time ago. They do they do instruments? No. Uh, well, yeah, oh. he, he does a, sorry, I thought you were going to say he does saxophone. No, he has oh. like, he has a few, like, like he had a, an SV77, it's a Korg like oh, stage keyboard okay. yeah, yeah. like he had that and like one other thing but like played it yeah, played yeah. it you know like, he wasn't just like boop 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 boop, yeah, yeah. boop like he was like 
on it. So Dope. that's any, cool. Anytime an instrument and uh, uh, what's her name? LP GOB, I believe she does that as well. She is a mm. phenomenal keyboard player. Okay. Yeah. I'll just check just it out. shreds. Um, but yeah, there you go. So some, uh, some surprise plugs for y'all. <laughs> um, okay. Now this is a fun one. This is one we kind of ask everybody early on mm -hmm. and, uh, it's definitely, definitely one of the crowd favorites. <laughs> what was the first album you ever bought with your own money? Oh shit. I know this off top uh, with my own money yep. was, um, Eminem, uh, Marshall Mathers LP. Oh, nice. That was the very first, like I went to the store, went to tower records by myself, well, I got dropped off, but you know what yeah, I mean. Yeah, had yeah. my own money. Yep. Went and bought it. They didn't check me for it because it had the parental. Yeah. And that was like the most craziest album. You know, <laughs> you I know? feel like that album kind of got. I think I think they just kind of let that one slide I think for a so lot too, of people because I was I shouldn't have been listening to any of that shit. Like it was, yeah, it was crazy. It was definitely everywhere. Yeah. When it yeah. was a thing. Yeah. Um, but I mean that's definitely a solid first one. Do yeah. Do you still have it? The actual CD, no, but okay. I, I do have the song still. Perfect. Yeah. Now, um, tell us about the first show you ever went to as like a person who attended, like that, that you like wanted to go to. So like, you know, if your parents like brought you to like a fair or something, not that, but like the first show you were like, that show's happening, get the tickets, go see the show. The first show. So I'll probably, the first show that I remember going to, like where it was just, it was me, my girlfriend at the time, my friend's girlfriend at the time. Yeah. We went to bumper shoot out here. And it was, um, it was Lupe Fiasco, Tribe Called Quest, and Kanye West. That was the whole lineup, and it was holy it was, shit. Yeah, it was crazy. Holy shit, it was super do you, crazy. Do you know when in Lupe's when in Lupe Fiasco's career that this was? Is, this is this is early Lupe yeah. because he did he did Kick Push, he did I Gotcha, and then he did um, Touch the Sky. So Kanye did it, and then Lupe came back out. Oh, that's awesome! Yeah, yeah, that's was awesome. Crazy. So, man, was that would that have been pre the cool? Yes, it was pre the cool. Oh. It, it was probably right before the cool because oh. yeah, I'm yeah. so <laughs> jealous. <laughs> yeah, it I was mean, incredible. New Lupe is still strong. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not trying to. You know, not yeah. trying to diminish that. But that is like, yeah, like it, it that was there. leading into the cool, and right before going out of that into the next stuff, like crazy. Yeah, oh. super crazy. Oh, I mean, and, you know, not to diminish a tribe called Quest and Kanye, mm -hmm. but. God, I'm jealous. I'm jealous. That's a, that's a great first show. That was amazing. Oh yeah. yeah. Now let's go ahead and dive into a little bit more of what you do. Give mm -hmm. us, tell us a little bit about your process. Like, how do you go about like picking songs, approaching the way you do things? Like, give, give us a little bit about the like the mindset that you go into. I'm talking about like in DJing in general, or yeah, like, let, let's let's stick to your more creative DJ because you're, okay. you're 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 a pretty competent beat juggler. Like yeah, a little you, bit. You're not beat juggler. Yeah. I'm sorry. Um, Turntablist, my yeah. mistake. Wrong, I mean, wrong. both. Yeah, yeah. I'm, yeah. I, yeah. I, I sit in the, I sit there comfortably with yes. both of those. Yeah, but but you um, definitely, you're definitely cutting it up. Like <laughs> at you. least on your videos on on Instagram. Yeah, yeah. So, um, let me see. So like, if we're talking about like the crowd and stuff like that, we're talking about like being out somewhere. I predominantly make sure that I'm trying to like the person who's not dancing, or the person who, the person who's judging me. Mm. That's what I'm looking at. If mm -hmm. they're looking at me and they're like, oh, yeah, black guy up there, he's gonna play nothing but hip hop. Mm, no, I'm gonna surprise <laughs> you, and I'm gonna turn around and play MGMT. Like yeah. I'm gonna do something like that that's gonna throw you off. Like, yeah. oh, here's a Tame Impala set, and you guys are gonna be like, "What the hell?" You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah. so for the most part, I like to make sure that I am as unpredictable as possible. Nice. So when it comes to like the club and whatnot, I'm making sure that it's like, oh, I can throw this at you and this at you, but let me throw this curveball out of nowhere that's still gonna work. You know totally. what I mean? Um, as for the videos. That's just random brain, just you know, yeah. sitting at home. I, Donkey Kong, that was a good. That's some good songs on it. it <laughs> what can I mix with it? Like stuff like that. So Hell yeah, well, that's yeah. cool that you just kind of like that. You can just go for it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. I feel like, especially once you like, especially for like DJing, once you've been doing it a while, like the technique exists to a certain range, like physically. Yeah. So you get the creativity mentally to do anything. Yeah, a hundred percent. Yeah, because there's things that I. I, I will scroll through Instagram and I'll see something and I'll go, I could do it this way. And then, you know, just yeah. I, I have to get up and try it. Yeah. You know? So whatever happens, happens at that point. Now, when you when you sit down and make your videos, do you do like a bunch of them at one time when you have a window? Or do you just like each day you like that you feel like doing it, you do one yeah. and put it up? Yeah. I so yeah, it's more the first than than the latter. So oh. like what I'll do is like how we were talking about earlier, like I'll grab three shirts. Like mm -hmm. I take that back. Sometimes I only have one idea and I'm going to go, all right, I'm going to try this one idea. Then I go, 
I got another idea. I got another. And it snowballs. And then I'm looking in my closet going, all right, okay, let me grab this shirt, grab this shirt, grab this shirt. I mean, they're sweating all my shirts out and shit. But yeah, that's that's how I usually do it. Hell yeah. Yeah. Now, um, out of this, this might be a little bit of a reach question, but mm. out of all the like, like putting songs together and like cutting things up and doing stuff. Do you have like one in particular that just like resonated with you and just like you still kind of like hum in your head to this day? Hmm. I don't know. Actually, no, I do know. I do know. It was my first video that got like more than a hundred likes or something like that. And this was a while ago. Yeah. Um, it was for Mario day, like March 10th. Mm -hmm. And I was like, Hey, I'm a, I'm the nerd. I'm, the, you know, all that kind of stuff. I want to do that. So I put on some overalls. I had like a red hoodie under it, all that kind of stuff. I was like, cool, let's do this. Sat in the, the random apartment. It was like right by the kitchen, all that kind of stuff. Did that. And like, it went way crazier than I expected it to go. So I had fun doing it because that's what I like. I would like to see another DJ do that. I would have definitely chimed in. Yeah. I did it, put my phone down, went about my day, came back and it was crazy that's awesome yeah so that's awesome now what do you use as far as the like as far as your like equipment goes like break down kind of your setup and then even like let's let's jump outside of it a little bit let's talk about how you like film it and things like that oh yeah i can give you all of that so yeah. um i have a uh, two rain 12s so those are more like they're the hybrid of a turntable and a cdj mm -hmm. or controller i guess yep. so it's like no needles no anything else just the record has like more of a vinyl record and everything like that um s11 mixer that's the pioneer mixer and then for filming yep no. <laughs> then for filming i um i just got a 360 camera instant 360 mm -hmm. insta 360 i think that's what it's called yeah. and um yeah that's been like all of my videos it tracks everything it moves around it gets the whole 360 so i can show you like my dirty room and then circle <laughs> back you know so do you yeah. do you get to control the movement of it in post or yeah, is it just post. okay yeah, okay yeah. so um, it's like it's just literally a stand camera and then it gets the whole 360 and post it as like an app and i sit there and i just keyframe everything oh and, okay yeah. well, that's zoom really cool. in and zoom out it's it's amazing that's awesome yeah that is y'all should de like if you haven't watched his videos yet they're really good so that if you're looking to do something similar that's a cool way to do it for sure that's who i need to get sponsored by because i put on like 10 djs to, to well, that i'm pretty sure they watch the show I so y'all make, make it happen make it happen <laughs> let's do this we, we we can make it happen all right now go ahead and tell us about like just one of your like craziest like gigs that you ever dj'd at ever like just the, the one that just was mm. either like wildest for the best reasons wildest for the worst reasons or a mix of both mm. Dang, it, I, I have a lot of stories. I have a lot of stories. The first one that comes to mind, um, I do weddings. I do a lot of weddings and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I had a bridezilla. I had a, okay, a okay. really crazy bridezilla. It's just, <laughs> just the worst probably. Like I did everything in my power to make everything work, but yeah. she just didn't like anything. So let's start here. Um, she had one of her friends play the ukulele during speeches and toasts right mm -hmm. i said cool have my mic set up everything right i don't know maybe it was just on his way out she, the ukulele player the friend she comes up and she tries to adjust it for herself it was already set up perfectly for her mm -hmm. she tries to adjust it she breaks one of the clips off oh no and like i was like damn how strong are you but yeah. you know snaps the clip off now it's just loose I right mean, you gotta have those ukulele guns you know Man. <laughs> <laughs> so now it's like kind of like sliding in and out like there's no yeah, there's just no way to close it. Yeah. So I'm just like, oh, man. So she did this right as she was performing. So I had to go up there. I had to grab the mic, sit behind her, and hold it for her, oh, right? No. It worked out, but it just looked weird and yeah. whatever. So I was like, that was thing number one. Thing number two, um, she had asked me for a specific song. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, okay, you know, not a, not a problem. I got that weeks in advance. Yeah. Okay, get the song. Apparently, she wanted the song, like... Not not even the remastered version, but it was like a, something very simple. Like uh, one had drums, one didn't have drums at a certain part. Uh, and she was like, no, I really wanted it to be this. I was like, oh, what was like, we discussed it. This is yeah. the song you gave me. She was like, this wasn't it. I was like, okay. Like, I think she changed the last minute, to be honest. Yeah, yeah I just didn't realize. And just overall, it was just a bunch of stuff. And then she got mad at me because I played, um, and this actually requested. Mm -hmm. She didn't say not to play it. Um, Return of the Mac. I played that like towards the end of the night 
and everybody loved it. Dance yeah. floor was having fun, right? She was like, "That's a song about cheating. Why would you play that song about wedding?" And I was like, "Touche." But yeah, but, but, but like nobody was listening to the yeah, words. Like no, it, you guys it, are fine. It's a wedding. Yeah, exactly. And like, it's towards the end of the night. Exactly. Anybody People still dancing and dancing? Because yeah, exactly. Yeah. They never feel so, my liquid courage anyway. Yeah. So yeah, that's that's probably my worst wedding one. But then, like I said, I have a plethora of just like the the club and you know drunk person spills drinks on my shoulder type stuff or you know stuff like that I, yeah that goes on and on now go ahead and tell us about your like your biggest performance like the one that you were like like that if you had to put if you had to put one on the top what one would it be right now my biggest performance my biggest look of any sorts has mm-hmm. been uh in san francisco my friend nopa slaps shout out dj nopa slaps shout out dj nopa slaps he has a party that he built all on his own called r&b and ribs oh they cook ribs there all that kind of stuff and the whole okay. theme of the party is r&b yeah. right so um i've dj with him a couple times he was like hey man you should come down and do my party it's probably the biggest party in the country right now so i was like cool i'll come down there we can go do it um I get down there, I'm excited, but I'm super nervous. I set up my whole entire, like, you know, list of songs, like what order, my set, everything. I had it all set up, ready to go, right? I open my laptop the day of, like, five minutes, you know, he's tapping me. He's like, hey, you ready to go on? And I'm like, yeah, yeah. Open my laptop. It's all out of order. And I was like, why is it out of order? I'm confused. I don't know what button to press to make it work. I'm asking Mm -hmm. my friends. I'm like, hey, what's the combination? You know, Macs are weird. So I'm trying to do all this. And he's still leaning over to me. He was like, hey, um, one minute, you're about to go on. And I'm like, uh, you know, and then he's like, hey, 30 seconds. I'm like, uh, <laughs> and he's like, hey, 10 seconds. The song's going to end. You ready? I was like, oh, shit. Ah, start pressing buttons. Made it work. At the end of it, because I literally just like blacked out and went into like whatever yeah. zone I went yeah. into, it turned out amazing. Like. I recorded the mix. I got live audio from the crowd. Hell yeah. Like it just, it's perfect. That's it's probably awesome. my best set that I've had in a very long time. Man, that's great. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's eh, bummer. That was like an oh moment, but like yeah. to be able to ride, not only rise past it, but like to like excel from it. It Yeah. yeah. It, it, it's one of those, like it's to a point now where I will go back and look at those videos just to like feel that again. Mm-hmm. Cause I'm like, man, like so many people, I made so many fans, so many friends off of that set yeah. where people were just like, wow we didn't know and i'm like yep 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 <laughs> you know hey sometimes uh you gotta fake it even when you've made it yeah, you know yeah very I mean? true yeah. very true <laughs> all right now let's uh let's let's talk some hypothetical questions mm-hmm. and these these usually i kind of span a little bit differently so uh, i'm gonna leave them a little more open-ended for you to interpret mm-hmm. but if you could like if, if you could work with any anybody like if you work with one person like either like as like you know back to back DJ set or like just however you would be involved with another like DJ or even a musician mm. how would you do that and who would you want it to be if it could be like any like accomplished person I have a list I have a list so let's see like there's a couple producers I want to work with so like and just like they DJ so yeah they they I think they all DJ um Dilla, J Dilla would be one of them. Mm-hmm. I would really want to like, I just want to pick his brain. Like I want to be in on a session. Like just why did you go there with that beat kind of thing, you know? Yeah. Um, K Trinata would be fun oh. to DJ with. Yep. Yeah. Just yep. to kind of like, cause his video, his uh, boiler room set is probably like my favorite video ever where Hell I go yeah. back and I watch that and just like the crowd behind him. It's just so much fun. Yeah. Um, Craze. Craze is somebody that I want to work with. I want to just, I want to DJ with him. I just want to be like, Okay, you do that. Now I'm trying to catch up to you. You know what I mean? Yeah. That'd be fun. Um, who else? Mm, New Jabez. Uh Japanese. D- yeah, from mm-hmm. uh, Samurai yeah. Champloo. Yep. Yeah. I, I would love, and I know passed away, RIP, but I would love to do, like, same thing with Dilla. Like, I would love to be in the room where it's like, this is where your brain went for that? Like, yeah. this is very cool, you know? Oh, I mean, the their way of approaching music like exactly. the, just, just, just the things that they created mm-hmm. like to this day are just yeah the, like there's just a different level yeah it, like, it, like you still listen to it today and catch new things exactly so yeah i mean yeah how i'd want to work with them is just that i i, I want to pick brains yep. and then if i can if i could like add in you know a small piece or something but it's like i don't think i'd want to you know i feel like they would up. i feel like they would just be receptive to it you know what i mean i like, think so too i feel like they they're definitely like 
they're definitely like the kind of artist who like they must have just accepted music around them. Yeah. And that's Every, how they, everything that came up, they were kind of like, I like this. I'm going to put this here. And, yep. and I, honestly, that's kind of where I've kind of went as a DJ where I'm kind of like, I want to make sure that all of these things kind of like show my style and show my brain, but at the same time make sense. Yes. Or you would think they didn't make sense and now they do make sense. Like, you know, yeah, I would totally. always want to do that. Now you you're working all the time. You're going all, I mean, you had a thing before this, you have a thing after this, you're mm-hmm. trying to do a thing after the thing after this, mm-hmm. like that just, you, you are, you're dedicated to the grind. Yeah. What do you do to kind of like separate the, like the work life from like the life life, like the balance, like do you, what do you do when you're like not doing this? Or is this just like when you're not doing it for a business, you're just doing it at home for fun? Like what it you- is, it is that, but I do have other hobbies and yeah. stuff like that too. So it's like, um, let me see plants, plants, video games, anime, like all three of those things. And then, I mean, you know, family. So that's, yeah, <laughs> you yeah know, totally. when I can't get away from them, I'm with family the whole time. So, <laughs> but, um, yeah, plants, like when I really get into something, like I really get into something. So like plants, I've always had a bonsai tree. I've always had mm-hmm. like for since, I don't know, maybe like 20 or something like that. I've yeah. always had like a bonsai tree, some sort of plant, right? Yeah. I'm always very like into the, just the little things of like a bonsai. It was like, oh, if you turn it this way, then it grows and does this and stuff like that. So we went from bonsais to like tropical plants to from tro- tropical plants to vining plants and stuff like that. So now I have like, 45 plants or something like that and i'm like learning how to like propagate and like break this piece off put it over here and now i grow a separate plant and stuff like that so when i really get into something i'm like really into it you know that's awesome yeah now uh just because you said anime top three go uh full metal alchemist uh samurai shampoo um damn what's the third one Mm, that I could watch over and over. I might have to say Yu Yu. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Like because because Yu Yu started a lot of it. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. Now uh and just, the theme song is goaded too. Oh, sorry. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh follow up question. Hmm. Uh Full Metal Alchemist or Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. Brotherhood. Thank Thank you. Yeah, I'm, I'm Thank glad you, you confirmed uh, that. Yeah. Did you know? Did you know that um there is a split point? Because you know how like the the first one, like the first half is almost more true to form, but then they really derail yeah. in the second half. Mm-hmm. There is a split point somewhere. I forget what episode it is, but if you on watch Brotherhood or on- no, no, like if you start with Full Metal Alchemist mm-hmm. and then at a certain point you jump over to Brotherhood, mm-hmm. it's it like completes the story. Like they didn't do this on purpose, but because oh, okay. the ending of Brotherhood was so much more true to form, right? But they kind of softened up the beginning to kind of run through it, yeah. They, there is a point where you you know you have to use a little bit of creativity to adjust to like art styles and like continuity, but mm-hmm. you can essentially experience the whole thing by starting with the the original really? and jumping to Brotherhood halfway so through. You said they didn't do it on purpose, but no. it is one of those things. That yeah, you, just happened. the way you look at it. Yeah, because okay. they because they were focusing stronger on the first half, mm-hmm. and then on Brotherhood they were focusing stronger on the second half. Yes, and so okay. accidentally there is a little bit of a like you can go from one to the other and get essentially and it the segues full, perfectly. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, 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 yeah. but yeah. It, it makes sense. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Okay. You okay. can you can watch it and like get that what should have been the full experience. I'm overdue. Unquote. I'm overdue for a binge. Perfect. So well, I, might, I, might, I might go do that. There you go. Yeah, and go, <laughs> go I think it. I think I read it somewhere once. So try and Google okay. it. See if you can find the jumping off spot. Okay. It's it's definitely there. Cool. But this is not an anime show, so we're gonna get <laughs> back into it. Um, who is like a local, like a, like an artist or a DJ or just somebody that you're aware of that you would like to interact with? That might sound. This might sound arrogant. I've literally interacted with everybody. That, yeah, I've interacted with everybody that I can think of. Hey, like that's perfect. Seven degrees of separation type. Like you know, you know somebody who knows somebody who this. You know what yep. I mean? Like, I mean, um, outside of like the hip hop scene or whatever, I'm down to go to any of the, like the alternative scenes and like get completely involved with that. Like I can. I'm very open format when it comes to. You know, yes, I can do hip hop, yeah. but I can also do an alternative set. I can also do a rock set. You know, I can also do all of that kind of stuff, and it still fits. You Hell know? yeah! So, yeah, I, everybody that I can think of, I have worked with probably in the past or recently or Perfect. something like that. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's great. Yeah. That's great. I mean, and again, you put in so much work. That's not surprising. I, yeah, I was to see. Uh, my friends usually tell me like they're like, you know, don't 
they my friends tell me to brag about my resume and i'm very like i don't need to or i shouldn't because it comes off you know kind of douchey or whatever i think there's definitely a difference between like bragging about it by like leading with it yeah and like when someone's like, oh, well, what have you done? Mm-hmm. Being like, oh, well, this. Or like if there's like yeah. a moment that's like applicable. Yeah. Like, you don't have to be like, yo, I hung out with Cher. Right, right, But right, like right. if you're like, oh, <laughs> actually, I know that person. Or like I'm aware of this track, like this and that. Like I think if you my, add in your knowledge from experience, yeah. that's different than being like, I'm better. My thing is, is because I am super quiet and super humble. It's either I talk a lot or I don't talk at all. You know what I mean? Yeah, I know so, exactly. Yeah. So because I'm super quiet and super like humble about how I go about things, when I do do that, people are like, oh my God, like, we understand, bro. <laughs> and I'm like, wait, you guys asked. Yeah. I was just, you know, so I get that a lot. No, definitely. Yeah. Now, if you could play at any one place, if you could like perform or DJ at any, any place on the planet. Where would it be? The moon. No, I'm playing. Um. <laughs> no, uh, Zev already said that. We defunct that. Sound doesn't work in it, outer oh, space. Shit. Okay, fine. Yep. All yep. right, whatever. But <laughs> if I get shout, service up there, that's Shout different. out to Zev because he also said the moon. <laughs> uh, let me see. And, and, and like the ability to perform at this place would be no issue. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah so okay. like just in a hypothetical world where you were um, like, I want to be there and it was there. Honestly, it's becoming more of a like where the crowd is or where the crowd would be the most like receptive. Yeah. I really and this can be anywhere, honestly. I want to do a boiler room set. I want to do a boiler room set like okay. in front of a, a waterfall or some shit. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I, I want to do one that's like like maybe in the woods or in a jungle. Like I want to do something like that. I want to do something where it's like because I, I know they have a, a festival that's actually in the woods. Yeah. And that would be dope. But like Man, I would definitely go to the jungle, do some shrooms or something with everybody, and like be there playing whatever my mind led to. You know what I mean? Yeah. But a boiler room set for the easy answer. It's, Hell yeah. I mean, that's yeah. that's a great one. Yeah. Now, if you had to do something different, like just it's just an like again, hypothetical. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. if this if you had to go do something different and you knew you would be equally as competent to DJing at it, what would it be? Mm. I was almost like a full blown teacher. So I would probably be, I'd probably be a teacher. I I don't know what kind anymore, but like I feel that, like I used to like, um, I used to do like after school programs and stuff like that. Okay. And all the parents were like, oh, you're really good with kids. And it's like, because I'm not Google Gaga. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I'm giving them, I might not give you the book smarts, but I'm giving you real life lessons. You're treating them like people and you're letting them learn what people need to know. Exactly. So it's like, you know, Math? Can I break down some math with you? You know, to a certain grade, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but after that, uh, it shit gets kind of hard. You got that, but would, other would, stuff, yeah. Would you want to work with like younger kids or like teenagers or like college? If it, mm. yeah, so we're we're gonna dive into this one a little bit. Yeah, yeah, I like that. Um, honestly, like if it's like strictly teacher, mm-hmm. I'd probably like up to like fourth grade. Okay. Because I think that, like you you can mold them a certain way, all yep. that kind of stuff. The world's crazy. Yeah. So it's like give them some sort of guidance where it's like, you don't have to, you don't have to conform to anything. Mm -hmm. Like do what you feel that you need to do. Obviously don't be a dick. Obviously don't be, you know, like be good to others and be good to yourself. Exactly. So I right that, that pocket from kindergarten to fourth grade, I would be good right there. Kindergarten, maybe not so much because they would be like expecting Google Gaga. Like, like I have a five year old, so I totally understand where it's like some of the stuff she does. I look at her and I'm like, (laughs) Like that doesn't work. It's like I know, I know you don't know. Yeah, it's okay. She thinks she's a princess. She legit thinks she's a princess. So I'm kind of like, we got to get out of that soon. But you know, <laughs> it is what it is. I mean, you know, it's a powerful mentality to have. Yeah, it's That's, hopefully it doesn't hinder her when she gets older. Say, just, but yeah. just, just early evolution her to being queen. Mm-hmm, you mm-hmm, know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. yes, yes, yeah. Like just oh yeah, I I let her do all of that. Go yep. ahead, full blown. Yep. That's you. But. Yep. In real life, I'm no, kind of totally, like, hey. <laughs> totally. Yeah. Now, all right. Oh, wow, dude. We, we were actually reaching, we've reached the end of this. Oh, did we? Yeah, I can't, I can't believe it. <laughs> uh, you know what? I mm. We're going to break the fourth wall on this one a little bit. Mm. Uh, my main man, Cameron, over here actually is a pretty competent DJ to a degree. Not mm-hmm. not, not on your level, throwing you under the <laughs> bus, Cameron. No level but <laughs> Cameron, what, uh, <laughs> what, what, what questions do you have from DJ to DJ? Like, what's something you would want to know? Favorite DJ gear out there. Favorite DJ gear. Let's go. Ooh. Um, 
the easy answer would be phase just because i prefer turntables i prefer that kind of stuff so it gets rid of the needles you can do tricks with it whatever whatever I've seen those, yeah. yeah it's it's different so i would say that but honestly my s11 the pioneer mixer that i have right now is probably it's you can do so much on it i still haven't even like scratched the surface so it's like nah yeah you, you can do oh, hey scratch. i see what you did i see what you did i, I got it <laughs> i got it but yeah it's I, that probably that probably be my favorite toy right now yeah. yeah. Hell yeah. Right? yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Oh you know what? I do have one more just cuz cuz mm. of that answer. What was what was your first DJ mixer? Oh shit, I don't remember what it was, but it was out of a box. I know that yep. much. It was yep. a, a literally DJ in a box. Oh, okay. Like my aunt, so at 14, I was babysitting my sister and my cousin, and they were like, "Hey, school's coming up. We're going to get you clothes. My birthday is like right around the beginning of school." Mm -hmm. So it was like, "Here, you know, perfect." money for school clothes yep i was like i don't yeah. want no damn school clothes i was like this is what i want it was two turntables a mixer i'll buy all the extra wires yep super ass it was <laughs> terrible but i made it work i was trash on it for three years and then you know eventually upgraded or whatever but yeah turntable in a box they were new marks i know that much. okay so the okay. mixer was probably new mark too all right well yeah. hey there we go yeah all right <laughs> so now we're officially gonna start wrapping this up uh what do you have coming up tell us about like big things i mean you do a million things but tell yeah. us like uh this this comes out like the third week of june so tell mm -hmm. us what's coming up after that oh well the third no third week of june i will yeah. already be in san francisco i'm gonna go do san francisco again um different party it's a more of a club so cool shout out to maxwell i'm gonna go do that oh um, nice let me what else um texas in august wow like late august that's gonna be a thing vegas i'm still working on vegas but vegas is supposed to be june 22nd i want to say are you gonna so. do are you gonna do promotion where it's just your name with an apostrophe s at the end nah, you know it's funny i <laughs> love i i was uh for the longest time i was supposed to put out a mixtape like vegas like aesthetic or whatever okay. and it's gonna be like vega in vegas or something like that like i've been working on it for years and i just never done it so i love that yeah same that. same brain man yeah, yeah. <laughs> well you you can steal the apostrophe S yes, thing. Yeah, you can, that, that, that is I, all I, you. I might have to. It, it won't work for me, obviously. <laughs> uh, I guess I have an apostrophe S yes on Jimmy's, so mm -hmm. there we go. There mm -hmm. you go. Mm -hmm. Be just like me. <laughs> um, how can people connect with you? What can they, like, if they want to reach out to you or do something, how can they How can they do that? Oh, uh, let's see. Uh, everything, for the most part, is that DJ Vega, so just simple, that DJ Vega. Um, the nerd at the cool table is my Twitch, but I haven't been on Twitch in a while because I got busy again, but Yeah that dj vega on everything hell yeah and then um any last like any shout outs any plugs anybody you want to you want to put on on here now's the time um no this is my turn now i'm playing <laughs> um, <laughs> um my crew fancy league djs that'd be the one and honestly you know shout out to everybody who's just now found me i guess that's probably the biggest one hell yeah, yeah. hell yeah well dude it it has been so much fun having you here mm -hmm. uh we've got one final question to go uh oh and, this, uh, and <laughs> I, I think i think you're actually gonna have a hard time with this one okay what is your guilty pleasure song oh no i'm not gonna have a problem with that actually oh perfect actually take that back i am because I, yes, I said yes. it and then like seven songs just scrolled through my head you know um, what? Uh, nobody ever gives us multiple. If you want, if you want to lay down a few, mm -hmm. you've definitely got discography knowledge up here. Go ahead and lay it down. Um, I'm gonna mess up the title, so I'm gonna have to sing some of these songs. That's fine. You're, you're also welcome to pull out your phone and look these ones up. Um, I, I, I won't fault you. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see. One song in particular that is always stuck in my head is ah, uh, is it? Tiff, no, that's not Tiffany. Anyway, um, I wonder if I take you home. Oh, yeah. Will you still be in love, baby? That that's like one of my top tier. Like I will sing that song at my like highest capabilities. Yep. Um, the Bee Gees, but that's not really guilty pleasure because everybody likes the Bee Gees. Um, let's see what else. I'm talking like what's the one where like nobody would expect, right? Yeah, either either that or like one where like. Every time you put it on, or like every time it comes on, the boys are like, "No, nah, not this." But you're just like, "Leave it." Like you just you, you just have to let it exist, even though the world doesn't love it. And just to kind of give you some examples, like "Umbop" 
was a previous one. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. There was a Limp Biscuit track that was one of them. Um, like I can't even remember what Casey's was now for uh, episode two hundred, but his was his was the oh the like we like to party. By was it Banga Boys? Yeah, 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 yeah. Banga Boys. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, See, like now you got me really thinking. Like Chop Suey, um, okay. System of the Down. That's but see, like a lot of my friends yeah. will rock yeah, with yeah, that. Yeah, that's so, a banger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, even like Toxicity, like Bring Your Own Bottle, like all those kind of things too would be in that same realm. Maybe I don't have. Maybe I am that like eccentric to my friends. I guess that they'd yeah. be like, "Oh, here's some typical Vegas <laughs> shit." I guess like they'll just kind of let me kind of go with whatever. Yeah, they they so. know you're gonna be putting on majority bangers. They'll yeah, let yeah. You, they'll but, let you play a couple for you. And whatever weird stuff I do put on, they'll kind of go, "All right, yeah." Like, oh, oh, okay, we'll give this a chance. No, so, I get that. I mean, yeah. before the before the radio format went away, we had put on over uh, 3,700 songs, over 200 hours of music, yeah. and there were so many times where people reach out to me and they're like, "Dude, I don't even like the style of music, but this, but I like this. this yeah. like, this is it. That's usually me. Yep. With with all of my friends, for, for the most part, they'll get in the car with me, they'll hear something, and they'll be like, "This is some typical you stuff," and I'm like, "Yep." No, this is. And, then, and they give it a chance. Yeah. yeah. They're more willing to, I guess, you know. Yeah, no, totally. I get it. Mm-hmm. All right, man. Well, hey, I want to say thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. This, was, this yeah. was incredible. I had a great time. Yeah. It was awesome. And again, thank you for making so much time in your schedule just to come through. Yeah. This, and uh, yo, we still got a, we've still got a little surprise after this. So yeah. don't, don't, <laughs> don't tune away after we fade out. But yeah. we are going to officially close. This has been another exciting episode of Jimmy's Jam Box. I'm Jimmy. I'm Vega. Bye. <laughs> Signing off. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another exciting episode of Jimmy's Jam Box. And that's a wrap. Nice. This is not a podcast. This is a show. show.